collection of numbers at this point. Probably for my benefit. I can give you some more stats though. We can talk about pistol rounds okay, and how successful ahead. these teams have been. I mean, Immortals have a 13 to 5. 72.5 success rate with their pistol rounds in this tournament, whereas Cloud9 only a 50% win rate. They've won 9 and lost 9. So if Cloud9 are going to consistently lose pistol rounds, they are going to make things difficult for them. So I want to see them step up their pistol round ability so they can give themselves a little bit of a platform for success in these following games. Percent pick for Cloud9. What are they going to bring here? And a full stack on A... And a beaten and battered up brimstone is going to make this uh, a bit more challenging than anticipated. And does jump right on into the side and immediately will land a headshot onto Bjor, marching up on top of heaven. Asuna right in front of him. The dark cover protecting Asuna for a moment here. But I like that 10. Sends a few shots through. If you get something out of it, that'll be wonderful. If not, no biggie. And you still have all these players for immortals right they're weak a weak omen a weak a weak brimstone brimstone finally cleaned up by relics Cover going out. it's gonna make this retake very challenging or made the retake very challenging and that will do it so look at that cloud nine win the pistol it's what you love to see and the possibilities gb oh no are endless if you win <laughs> pistol rounds <laughs> I want to see them pick up. I want to see them actually get a little bit of momentum here, though. We saw in the previous game that pistol rounds, they were sometimes thrown away, or even after that second round, like teams dropped off a little bit. It is very much different. Uh, I know people will often compare Valorant to Counter-Strike and how important the pistol is on Counter-Strike. Yes, it's important on Valorant as well, but it's not as important because that third round often is thrown away because of the economy and how it works. Sometimes you can even end up 2-2 after winning the pistol round if you force up and if you've lost a couple of players in those early stages. C9 opting to head towards A yet again, and it is a heavy B stack on the opposition side of Immortal, so they are going to be able to comfortably stroll onto this A site, get the spike down. It's just going to be the Brimstone who's going to be the closest player to stop them. And I don't think he's caught wind that they're there, but he would have just heard the orb now. And you can see the rest of the team are going to be rotating through middle here. And they may actually start to fly on through here. Tens gets into that corner and they're on site safely now. All those players just continuing to chip away at that wall. They also took down the door too. Mitch going through the smoke. What a clever little spot he holds, but it was going to be tagged out there. They're looking at all the possible angles. Mitch has them all lined up. That's two frags there for Mitch. Asuna and Heaven, similar fate from last round, will end up meeting his end by Tenz's Spectre. And even though Kohler is looking to do something, just, just get a few kills, right? Give them a little bit of an advantage. But Shinobi, okay, okay, I respect it. I respect the body disrespect coming out from Shinobi. But now this is the big boy round. They've got... Well, two SMGs, they were able to save because Mitch was only having the pistol. And the Bulldog to work with as well. So we're going to see one Phantom being brought up and maybe a second here. Yeah, it's going to actually be a, a Vandal for Mitch. And I tell you what, Mitch is saying to Moses, oh, you think I'm a one-trick pony as a Sage? Huh? Well, he's got four kills to start things off with. 4-0 oh at the moment. And we've seen in different regions. I mean, I'm specifically talking about G2 and how David P showed us that an aggressive Sage can work out. And maybe that's what you have to do on Ascent. If if she's not going to be the pick that everyone wants to see because she's a little bit slower and she doesn't have the support that she has on other maps, be a bit aggressive, do something a little bit different, and maybe you'll find more success. They have gotten some intel out of mid. Enough to just prompt that they're going to make their way over toward A now. And another A hit for Cloud9. Relic's playing mid with that Bulldog. Asuna pokes out. He's actually going to get tagged up. He's waiting this one out now. They're stacking up on A, Gaskin, and it, it's looking like a real similar situation from what we've previously seen in rounds one and two. They're going to go for this one very quickly. Bjor gets... Paranoid out. Oh, but just at the at absolute clutch moment, you got that detection there. JC Stani with two, but two kills are in tra traded instead. Bjorn JC go down. 
now that just leaves tens here to hold out the doorway and they'll get this spike down successfully after placing that wall preventing the movement on heaven and another clean abrupt take of a side just as they did in rounds one and two and they've got rifles to work with here do you need to be careful of the paranoia that's coming onto site? Asuna will be the first one on. Mitch gets one relics and tends clean things up. And that's going to be a third round on the board. And the economy on the side of Immortals is going to be a back to the bottom. And that means they're just going to have to go on board with the sheriffs and try and do something with their defensive round. I mean, when we saw, I say we saw, we see the statistics of how Cloud9 played against Sentinels on this map. And Cloud9 didn't pick up one round on their defensive side. They were only able to pick up seven rounds on their attacking side, but then they won nothing when they were defending. So they probably have that kind of thought process in the back of their minds of we need to pick up as many rounds attacking here because our defensive hold is not that great, especially it wasn't against Sentinels anyway. And Immortals definitely have the ability to push like Sentinels did in their previous time. Caller tagged up 21 HP, has to get out of dodge there. Trying to go for any kind of picks. But that life lead, right? Because they did damage on Kohler and, and and no one to heal them up. So he's just going to have to deal with that for the rest of the round. And another potential A hit. JC Stani, though, will connect with a shot outside. There goes Relics, though. And Relics. Oh, no. It's the, the classic. The classic ends up catching him. And now they'll be able to get some guns out of this one. It will have a man advantage as well. But it ain't going to matter all oh. that much when you have tens playing the way that he's playing. That's two kills for him. Looking for another one and just like that. And they're going to use that res to keep their economy going nice and nice and healthy. And yet again, C9 are just that A site hit has been beautiful every round. It has, and even though it looked bad for Relics there because he got taken out by the Classic behind, he got so much information. He caught one player in middle, saw another top mid, and then there was yet another player on Pizza, which is what which spelled his demise. But he was able to communicate that to the rest of the team and say, hey, look, you've got a site. I've just seen three guys mid. So you can now close that door. You can set up. You can get that spike down. It was just a comfortable round following all the information he had gathered. But now we're back to a full buy here. Oh, no. Immortals and oh, Vice, he ran straight into the orbital strike and then straight back out to the Phantom of Bjork. And for the first time, they'll get that early pick and have the player advantage here now, Immortals. So much that they used for that, but hey, right? If it works, you might as well stick with it. Now, Asuna in the off angle here, waiting. If Relics does poke this, we'll get traded out immediately. Oh, he got knowledge and now uh, he can't get away from it quickly enough. Unfortunately, while you do move fast in that intangible state, not fast enough. Shinobi will be split up from his teammates, though, as Kohler it does get the kill onto tens. Area. They know exactly where they're going to be located. Shinobi, one shot with the Hunter's Fury. Doesn't locate a second kill as the two players are tucked away by the defender side. And he will get tagged out and he's going to get bolted. So location revealed. They can push this one if they so dare. But Shinobi! Oh, man, Shinobi, what a play. And that is five for Cloud9. And I said, what kind of sober player is Shinobi going to be? Well, he's one who destroys, and he knows not to be scared when he gets tagged. When that information is given, and they know exactly where you are, of course, it's a flash. It's a sudden flash of where you're positioning yourself. You just have to be confident in your shot and peek at the right times. Exactly what he's done there. Five. Oh, now to Cloud9, showing up here on Ascent. A dominating start for C9. Just recently announced their third player. They're taking her sweet time with this one. Mitch officially a part of Cloud9. But this roster, the more they play together, the scarier they get. Look this how aggressive is Mitch is being over. here. Like, yeah. he's the Sage, and he's saying, I don't care, I'm going to push on to B-Site. Elsewhere, Relics and Tens are oh just having goodness. a field day in middle. It doesn't matter who pushed out. Yes, okay, it's an eco round, but it's so easy for them as they take down three. Now there's just two remaining players, and this is looking like it's going to be 6-0. Unless we some they see something incredible and something special, but I highly doubt it. Spike once again planted at A of... 
Gangster gets a kill here. That's nice. Oh, okay. Okay. Trying to go for the poke. Doesn't really work out for him. Shadows traveling. Yeah, hold on to that weapon with dear life. Kohler's just clutching his pearls here, <laughs> hoping that no one goes and takes it away from him. And it could very well be Relics. Who's the furthest in position to do so. The round will freely go to C9, but the story now is going to be whether or not Kohler can hold on to this Vandal. He's in the mud. He's in the oh, mud. He didn't God. look. He looked at the wrong spot at the wrong time. And Relics rips that Vandal away from him. Oh, you hate to see it. I mean, who's best to hunt an omen? Another omen. You think like they do, and you'll be able to find them and punish them and take away, strip them of that weapon. They're not twins, Dan. I mean, why not? They are literally the same agent, all right? But they're not if you the play same that person. Agent, well, but, you know, all Omen players think the same. That's how it works, Golden Boy. Is, is it really? That, surely. How much matchmaking have you played? They all play exactly the same, God damn it. It's fair enough. I mean, everyone that I've ran into has been a complete edgelord. Insta-locking, you know. Yeah, and I guess you're right. Probably what happens, yeah. That's how, that's how Omen yeah, that's how and it is, yeah. Here comes Mitch again with the aggression. Like, he's playing entry, basically, at this point on this B side. He is looking to see if anyone is going to be facing there at B main, and he is more than happy to take that fight. He's very confident in his shot. Mitch was a little concerned that the Hunter's Fury would have come out there. He was looking at that wall, anticipating that, that ultimate ability. But I don't think that that was going to be invested in that particular instance and in, in smart enough. Away. They're doing the same thing again, Gaskin. Another stack here. It's worked for them so many times now. You might as well just do it again. But Bjorn is going to be sitting inside of hell. Look at the angle that Ten's got. The absolute madman. JC Stani, two kills though, is going to stop this push. It, it's worked so many times that surely at some point, Immortals had to stop this foolishness. Is is ten tens even enough here? No, I I I, I just didn't want to believe it. You know, they, at, at some point the shenanigans need to end, and finally, Immortals get their first round win after losing six straight. Do you know the main difference there is tens had an op, and tens wasn't the first one onto site. He wasn't like dashing in and being able to break any cipher traps that were down. Being yeah. able to spray down anyone. He's hit so many incredible shots already this game. But then when he had the op and when, of course, he had the ultimate available to him, he played slightly differently. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that Tens can hit shots with the op and jet players are phenomenal when they are opping as well. But that was the main difference I saw in terms of how they were pushing. Well, they also they didn't they didn't uh, go for the straight push updraft. They actually walled double updraft so that he could get the blades out and look over the peak, right? Like look over that ledge. Uh, so just didn't pay off, right? they, they just didn't give him anything, right? So that was just a, a credit to Immortals not allowing them to freely get a pick by exposing themselves because that's been happening ultimate, like one too many times. Gangster does manage to tag one enemy, just give a little bit of information. This Cloud9 down to just four are going to have to reassess how they want to approach this. The one benefit of it being Ascent is even when you have lost one agent, I do feel like if you do stack up and push a site successfully, you still can get that spike down. But of course, you are going to find yourself playing the numbers game and probably being in a difficult retake situation. Does Mitch still have wall? I mean, if he oh, does, no. oh. he might be able to do something here. He does. He does still have the wall, but oh, look at all that, one, all that info gained, golden boy. <laughs> Just like that. All that knowledge. Nope. Not going to happen. They're stacked now. This is going to leave the fight to Kohler to try and clutch this one. Shinobi, he's been great this entire time. And they'll get onto the site. They'll be able to put this one down. And if anyone tries to get on there, the recon was there to detect them. So they'll get the objective done. But unfortunately, that's all they're going to get done here is they will not be able to win that round. And Immortals now have got themselves two on the board after a very rocky start here. Yeah, and they'll start to do a little bit of damage now to Cloud9's economy, but yeah. that's what I was talking about with Ascent. Like, you can you can all gather up and you can successfully push onto a site if you've got the utility. They had the wall, they had the jet smoke, but with just two players going up against four who are going to be retaking, it's so difficult to try and position yourself on that B site when you just get trapped in, especially when the opposition still has utility to work with as well. 
Um, it is going to be a somewhat full buy here on the side of Cloud9. I just see one Bulldog there to work with for Shinobi. But they've tried a site and it was successful. And now we've seen the kind of counteraction come through from Immortals. They've worked this out. Ooh. Oh, I like that. That's an interesting orbital strike. Forces them out yet again. And that's worked twice now. One player getting caught out escaping that orbital strike and that is a perfect way to utilize it not just defensively which we see so often but almost aggressively as you mentioned though with a man down it, it, it's not necessarily the end of the world with how ascent plays out so if they group together and and just go for a very quick execute as they have successfully done a few rounds now this time around, though, they'll be without the Omen, so they won't have the paranoia to start this. But if Relics can manage to make his way over to Tree and then pop paranoia, that will give them the opening. And let's not forget, as you just saw, Mitch used the res. So now they'll have that man advantage. That whole play was just to make that res happen, apparently, because look at the movement now. They're actually starting to make their way through back over to mid. I really, really, really like this patience here, but they need to move. They don't have a lot of time remaining. Yeah, just 22 seconds. Hunter's Fury gets popped to get a little bit of information. Bior avoids, but now he's there to get the spray down. Gets one, gets two. Tens and Mitch will chime in, but with just 15 seconds, they have to pick up this spike, and they've got to travel so far to be able to do so. The wall does come up. Ooh. They're running out of time here. They're not going to be able to plan nope. this. So now they just need to get both kills, but Fuller's there to deny it. And I think it was just a little bit too late with that execute there, Golden Boy. Yep. I like the idea. I like the res, and that is going to be one of the benefits of having the Sage, of course, is to resurrect. But they worked so long to get themselves back towards that dead body. They didn't really give themselves time to get onto the site. E even Mitch's unorthodox walls have been great. And perhaps everyone's thinking about Sage in, in a very ordinary way when you have to change the entire approach uh but yeah it was time time was their enemy there it's not just the other team when you're the attackers you you have to play against that clock too and if you're not executing quickly enough well that that could eventually be your undoing just means you don't have any room for mistakes and that exactly. one player falling and the spike going down was to their detriment. They weren't able to get onto the side because of that as Mitch gets the opener onto Gangster. Ooh. Again, being aggressive with those walls that you were just speaking about, but at least Asuna was there to stop him in his tracks. We're into a four versus four now and without the Sage, it means no heals on either side at this time. It's an even spread across the map, just kind of focusing on middle at the moment and there's going to be the info, but do they follow him? And I want to com uh, really commend, excuse me, uh, Asana, what he did there. Because the Sage is there, when you make that peek from, from Red Room, you have to look at that window. Because with the Sage, that's more than likely going to happen. It's just a credit to how good Asana is. Now heads up, he is as well. Gets another kill on Relics. That is going to hurt them uh, quite a bit. Last player left alive is just going to be tens. In a 1v3 with a beaten up Cypher as well. Bjor is in a real rough spot here. And Tens could just tailwind right through this if he wanted to. Oh, but did he hear him? He did. He oh. saw him, but Bjor, even with just a smidgen of HP remaining, 10 HP, manages oh. to get the kill there. Big one. I would love to see that from Bjor's point of view, because that was a flick if I've ever seen one. Four in a row now for Immortals, and things weren't looking great for them. I'm going to be completely honest. This was looking like it could have been a bit of a stomp, but oh yeah! as soon as Immortals were able to get that up, they were able to get a little bit of money behind them, reset the economy on the other side. They've looked way more comfortable at defending the sites, but it's going to be a question as to whether Cloud9 feel they've done enough with those six rounds at the start. Yeah, they were getting a, a hit with the right hook, the left way. jab. I mean, everything was just landing on them, right? And and then they reset. That's what you do in, in something like boxing, right? You reset, you talk to your, your, your coach, you talk to your trainer, and you're like, all right, what do we do here? What's the play? And they, they have to have that conversation together, and they have to have that conversation each and every round. So well done for Immortals to bring this one back and make this half on, on defense respectable because, boy, it did not start off that way.
Look how defensively Immortals are holding as well. Asuna not trying to take mid, instead just jumping out on Fountain, trying to get information. Kohler gets one, Asuna will get the second. And all that information that was gathered from Asuna, just having that Fountain jump, the peek out onto mid to see if anyone was going to be pushing. Asuna has done so well at gaining info, and it's not something you necessarily see from a Reyna that often. Because of Reyna's ability to go vulnerable, to kind of get away from a fight after you've been able to get an initial frag, it means you need someone who's confident. And Asuna just oozes that confidence. As you were talking about, the peak from Red Room, that is not something every player would do because if they lose that fight, they potentially lose the round. But he was confident in his own ability to be able to just say, hey, you know what? Screw it. I will take this 1v1. Ever since Asuna was brought onto this roster, I've sung his praises time and time again. And yes, Asuna, I know that you have an anime picture for your Twitter profile, uh, but don't worry, I trust you. It's fine. I said don't trust anime profile pictures, Gaskin. I don't know if you saw that tweet. I did see that, yeah. I still stand by my point. And I mean, as you should. You should be confident as he is in his Valorant ability. You should be ah. confident in your ability to decipher things that happen on Twitter. <laughs> Well, this is going to be that critical round here for Immortals. And and what a topsy-turvy series of events this has been. Oh, uh, Bjorn, Bjorn caught him on the trap wire, but was able, Tens able to just clutch it out again? Yes, because that is what Tens does. JC Sani, though, clearly sees that Relics was going to be there, and he was very weak. And May this actually be the moment that C9 was looking for, finally getting a round win after losing so many back to back to back to back. Ends with another kill there, Asuna in heaven, and it's not enough there. Only one player remaining, Kohler is out of here. And 7-5 as we go into the next half. And the only thing that worries me about that exact scoreline is that this was exactly how it looked like when Cloud9 went up against Sentinels. They had Very a 7-5 to five attack in half, and then they lost eight in a row against Sentinels when trying to defend on Ascent. Now, I'm not saying that Immortals are the same as Sentinels. They, of course, have very different playstyles, but Immortals definitely have that ability to put rounds together, as we've just seen, when they're confident. So if Immortals win this pistol, I'm a little bit scared for Cloud9 here, but... I don't know. We'll see whether Cloud9 continue that 50% pistol win rate that they had previously. It's 10-9 at the moment, so they're above 50% for the first time. And they're going to go right back down and it'll be 10-10. <laughs> the math checks out. It does check out. Now, similar instance from what C9 was doing constantly in their half on attack yeah. was grouping up on A long and then just going for it. It's, it worked out for them quite a few times, but they will have Asuna there with that Leer to give them that little protection, that freedom to move on to the site, and it works out. So they'll get that, they'll get on this one, and they'll place that spike down instantly. They have protection over on A main too, so be on the lookout for that. No one will be uh, visiting the Omen there on main, but that's fine. I think he's uh, going to be more than okay with that one. There's four players stacked up, one inside of trees. It's tens. They know that it's tens because these smokes have gone out. Tailwind is out, but it isn't going to be that long before he's picked off. And we're looking at a camera view of a player that was just playing it real safe. And I respect the, the safe plays, but ultimately, it's going to be Immortals. They'll get that one. They'll secure that pistol win. And it was pretty good for them, considering they were able to get onto that site so successfully, get the plant down. It's very difficult sometimes to position yourself correctly for a post plant on a site. There's just so many different angles you have to cover and so many different angles you're exposed from, from the teams, mm -hmm. from the players that are pushing. But they were able to watch every angle there and just trust in their teammates to cover them from behind. Because it's often you get shot from behind when you are trying to stay alive on that A site. But because all five, all five of them were alive, it's obviously something they've tried and tested, they've practiced before. They knew exactly where they needed to be. And then the last time that this had uh, occurred, it was going to be Immortals doing literally the same thing that Cloud9 is doing right now, except they did it over at B-side. They all grouped up. You have pistols, so you're just going to look to frag for each other, get kills, try and get them to spend money in the next round. Spike's already down, so this is looking great here for Immortals currently. 
JC Stani has an angle on a few players here. Oh, JC Stani with three. I know it's just a pistol, but you just really love to see it. That's why you use the Phantom over the Vandal. And that's why you see so many teams, especially defensively anyway, use the Phantom. But you can see how aggressively it can work out for those post-plant situations. Spray down is just something you have to be considering. Vandal, so difficult to do that with. As Vice is the last remaining player, maybe hoping to get an exit, but Colin denies it. And we are all square now, seven to seven. And after the two rounds, in this stage after the pistol victory, now we'll get to see how Cloud9 defend on this map. Have they improved from their matchup against Sentinels? Can they get some defensive rounds on the board? This game has just been weird. I mean, look at that scoreline. It's just a just a weird game. Hold up. Also, you can't play controller on, on PC. It just Hold doesn't up. really work. It doesn't work in Valorant, guys. And no, before he, before people say, that's because you tried. No, I didn't try. Okay. Oh my wire. Shut up, Moses. I knew that Moses would chime in as soon as there was a controller that appeared. 7-7 seven, seven and it's an aggressive TV to get closer towards pizza here. Smoking off that defender side spawn. So now they can push towards Pizza, get close towards Red Room, but there's Mitch showing a little bit of aggression on his own, but he's only able to get one. But maybe the damage is oh. already done. The information given to Shinobi, who gets the double. And now they have the player advantage. And Vice peeking around corner there, got the frag on JC Stani, leaving this into a 1v3. When the big boy guns come out, C9 thrives apparently. But it's not over yet. Even though it is a 1v3, there's still some time remaining. Your wins this fight, the game changes. But the intel has been given to Vice, and Vice is going to benefit from that one. And okay. And it's also weird, too, because the player now stays there, right? You know, with the Elder Flame skin, the the, the player's like burnt and, and disappears. But now with the Oni skin, they stay there and chained, shackled. Yeah, so then when the shackled and, comes and, out, and, it and just feels the, worse. Yeah, it really is. And then it just looks weird, you know? It does, yeah. I mean, I'm not comfortable with it, but yeah, it, it, it's something that happens, all right? And we're just going to Cypher, gonna too, and he's kind of a creeper. So, you know, it's just a lot. Of... <laughs> Cypher on Cypher as well. So then, it, yeah, there's a lot of things to kind of diagnose I'm about packed. that whole situation, and I think yeah. we should just move on. We will. But it is going to be a round for C9, and this is a good thing. They weren't able to do this against Sentinels. They weren't able to find any rounds defensively, so they've been able to progress at least by one. Let's see if they can make it two here. Let's not get ahead of ourselves now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe it's just <laughs> going to be the one. It's going to be more aggression now mid. They've been able to dominate mid control here just with smokes, Golden Boy. The importance of smokes on a map like Ascent cannot be uh, understated. Look at what happened with Homeless and how they were able to just control the map entirely and not allow T1 to get the vision that they so desperately needed for players like Scott to be able to do his job. JC Stani anticipating that Mitch or, or any player really would be coming off of a, of a flank there, backs away at the worst possible time. If he stayed just a touch longer, would have benefited from that one. A brilliant one way there from Tens as well, but gets tagged up by Asna. Thought that the tailwind might have been enough to get away from it, but it's not. Relic so meets him at the generator. Bjor's there for the change up. And then here comes Gangsta onto site now. 13 HP. Does have the spike and will be able to safely put this one down. Mitch, though, it's JC Stani that actually is there for the pickup. And now it is just one player left alive. And oh no, a few seconds remaining. Shinobi, does he get the Hunter's Fury off? Doesn't get the third shot. And no time to plant, perhaps. Gets it right at the nick of time, but oh, baits it out. Baits it out. Oh, that was dangerous territory there. But Shinobi managed to keep it together for his team. That that could that was a brilliant fake in, in, in really just an instance that I, I will 100% say Gangsta made the right call. Yeah, it's always very difficult in that situation, but I think because Gangster was so weak in terms of HP, mm -hmm. he had to take a risk there. If he had just planted and allowed Shinobi to just walk out on him, it was going to be a very comfortable victory for them. Instead, he yeah. tried to call the bluff. Unfortunately, 
just moments, seconds away, and of course didn't manage to get that frag because he was low, but both of them played it pretty well. Just a shame that he was low on health, otherwise that could yeah. have been an even more entertaining battle. Because if he, if he had enough HP, he would have fully planted it out, right? You uh, think so? he, yeah, or at least you, you would imagine that that would certainly be the case. Shinobi get some damage on that? No, didn't really get much out of that one. The shock dart. That whole play was simply going to be for the orb, which they successfully obtained. And I believe that orb was going to be for their Sova. The thing that worries me about, like, all this mid control that we were seeing from Immortals is they had all the mid control, but it was where they went afterwards. They kind of like umdenard about pushing through pizza. Did we go back towards B? Did we go to A short? Eventually they decided on A short, and of course they were so close on winning that round, but it's so difficult to actually do anything once you've got that mid control. If you're going up against a team that sits back and allows you to have mid, then you're like, well, mm -hmm. okay, we've got middle. Well, what happens now? Where do we go? We're just going to be walking into angles. We're going to be walking into crossfire wherever we might be. You're almost hoping that people are going to get aggressive and push out. And speaking of aggression, Vice gets two, Ooh. makes it three with the Bulldog. Insane stuff from him. Austin over by, by main gets plugged there. And now only player left alive. It was Gangsta inside of the dark cover. Not even a worthwhile classic to pick up, but you want those sheriff's up upgrades, right? Might as well. Uh... I, it, given what they were working with in that round, I, I will say mission accomplished for Immortals because they got a few orbs. They got the two orbs that were on the map that were just available. And even though they died, now they're going to have a few ultimates online. So, yeah, you, you know, they weren't really going to get much value out of it. If they were able to win the thrifty round, that would have been huge. Great for them. But now as we go into this next round of play here, no more charges left. C9 with this advantage, 10-7. So yeah, they have certainly improved upon what they previously put forward on Ascent. They went back to the drawing board, Gaskin, and they did their homework. Yeah, sometimes you just have to learn those lessons and you have to look at what went wrong or what went right on the other side as there's a Suna with the opening frag onto tens. Hunter's Fury gets popped and there's a lot of ultimates to be used this round. Gangster taking down Shinobi, also relics and oh my god, there's just pandemonium here on the kill feed. And his collar gets one of his own and it's going to be a three versus one. It was so quick, Golden Boy, in terms of kills just getting traded out left, right and center. Surely it should be a comfortable victory at this point. And again, they, they had that mid control, but it was the ultimates being popped just to try and push yeah. out onto the site. And that was part of the reason why I was highlighting what they did in that last round. They were playing for the ultimates, getting possession of those orbs, two of them on the map. That's big, right? That's, that's massive. So then they use that for this next round of play. It works out gorgeously for them. And now they're just two rounds away from being able to come back. It, it's... Was it was it the prettiest? No, not by a long shot. But they did exactly across these two rounds what they needed to do. And now they're they 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 they're at a point where they can come back. But I am concerned though. I am a little bit worried for immortals, given how they they really haven't had a few answers uh throughout these rounds. It's been a bit of a struggle for them. Well, the only ultimate left is going to be Asuna with the Empress available. I mean, that is scary. When you're going to have an increased fire rate and the ability to turn invisible after getting a kill and healing yourself up, Asuna can go nuts here. Like, that is what you want your Reina to be doing. You want to have someone who is confident and having the ability to just push and get aggressive and being able to win these trade-offs, win these 1v1s. As Speaking of 1v1s... Well, Tens opens the round with a little bit of operability. And with that kill means they will not have an opportunity to bring him back because they're not running a Sage. Versus on the other side, that if they were to get a kill, depending on how they play this out, they know that a res is on the table. It is an option for this team. Now Asuna, a leer inside of trees, does get a kill and backs on out of there. Job is done. But Tens... So crafty. 
And a double op play, as a matter of fact. Mitch connects to Bjor. 3v4. Kohler's there for the trade to help his teammate out. JC Stani is going to fall. Still a very doable situation here for Immortals. The A site is open. Of course, we know that Immortals, they don't have a foggy idea. And while all that is going on, while the site is going to be available to them, you have tens creeping up on it. Asuna is going to be in the back and has managed to get on out of there. Oh, tens. Waiting for the jump up here. Oh, gets the frag onto Kohler now. That's going to hurt. Leaving just Asuna alone. 1v2. Can Asuna do it? You will not oh, scratch that. I said it before. The res would be on the table. They use it. So now Asuna with the increased fire rate. Gaskin, you highlighted this at the beginning of the round. But Tense is going to pop up behind him. It doesn't matter. The classic of all things is going to end Asuna. And that will be the round in favor of C9. But they did the job. They did what was necessary in that round, right? They, they really were able to pick apart Cloud9 bit by bit. But that res giving them the advantage, it worked out in the end. I mean, they had such a big flank through to that defender's side spawn. And when you're going up against two ops, it's very difficult to push through the choke points. Mm -hmm. You can't push through B main. You can't push through A main through the arches as well. Short is often covered. So you kind of have to go through pizza. You have to smoke it off. That also meant it became somewhat predictable. They said, well, we've got the ops. We're watching these angles. They have to be pushing middle here. So can someone go watch defenders spawn? Uh -oh. And then they were able to get the trades. They got the information. Yeah, now it's 11-8. Oh, no. He's got the angle. Tens. Oh, tens. He double updrafted up and then got a kill on Bjor, who was in camera state. Oh, man, what a play. Got a feel for Bjor, though. You hate to see oh, yeah. it. Whether it's a Sova drone or whether you're in camera... If you're defenseless and someone just peels you out of nowhere, it's not going to be good. But JC Stanny picking up one onto tens, and that's a really, really important frag if they're going to get back into this game. Desperately needed that one. If C9 wins this, they will be at match point. Orbital Strike now is out. Gangsta, through all of that, gets that frag on Relics. One player going to be inside of this uh, of heaven. And just as I say that, Gangsta is going to make quick work of Shinobi. So goodbye. We'll see you for the next one. 4v2. A four versus two when you've got an off is always going to be difficult. And that's why Mitch, straight out of dodge, probably would have a little bit of a think if Vice was able to pick up one about now. But Vice also opting to save two. So it's going to be 11 9. And he is able to save another op. So at least they're going to have the double op still and don't have to commit too much financially to be able to ensure that they can go for the double op setup. That's the only thing that worries me about having two ops, right? Is the retake capabilities is very difficult. Being able to just slowly peek around those angles, especially when you don't have your jet alive, you can just dash in and dash away and get those mm -hmm, trades. Mm -hmm. But the ninth on the board for so Immortals. It's so strong, though. It is, it, it, it is so strong. So powerful. I mean, we're seeing more and more just having a successful opper on your team, how important that is for the success of your team. Like, how those early picks can shape up the rest of the rounds and that's why we're seeing so much jet at high level play because you can get that pick and then you can dash away and it you can't trade against a jet that's probably why someone like sam is saying hey we, we want to see a jet nerf because she is so strong <laughs> in the right hands she's terrifying and at i believe it was pulse there was jet with judge all the time oh yeah was another thing that we were getting round after round and tens oh my word tens through the smoke connects in a in a real big kill there asana your your top fragger your entry as well so no leer all right but he waits this out now as so we make our way over to Kohler here, who's hanging out in mid-market. And this kind of goes back to what you were talking about before, Gaskin, where your your options really are going to be you're going to kind of slim to none. But that, that kill right there, that kill gives them an opening to start to push on over to that A site. 
Oh, I thought Mitch actually connected with that one. It didn't end up working out for him. JC Stani lands a headshot there. Spike is going to go down now. Goes down, but there's two players who are very weak indeed. Beaten this up. This retake is so very much on the cards, but there are a decent amount of post plant positions here. They're trying to cover all the possible angles, but Shinobi gets two with the spray down. Which now means they can push onto the site with the oh, advantage. No. Flies through the floor. Denies anything from hell. We'll now it's all down to Gangster in a one versus three. He is going to be sat on Jen. Gets one, but can't get any more. Shinobi with the 3k. And that's going to be 12. That's going to be match point now for Cloud9. Certainly has been an improvement for C9 on this map. It was their choice. The start was hot for Cloud9. Six in a row before dropping five straight. And now at match point, Cloud9 one step closer to moving on in this competition. The ops have been beautiful thus far. Tens landing so many shots that have been beneficial for this team. Now we'll see if they could put this one away once and for all. We saw in that round, I mean, you were talking about it, like they had the mid control again and they, yes, okay, they got the pick and they got onto site, but they were too predictable because it was so late in the round. They'd been in middle for so long. As soon as that pick happened, Cloud9 knew they just had to instantly rotate round to A. They got a couple of kills. And I mean, well, the, the retake was so successful. I mean, Shinobi with the double spray down was what won them the round, really. Gangsta sending that Hunter's Fury into basically nothing, but Shinobi has a lineup. They move away, and they got two players tucked in the cubby. Doesn't get the other connection, but does the damage. So you know that Shinobi's back there, without a doubt, which is why they're sending bullets through that wall, that paper-thin wall there. Mitch playing all the way back on site, and look at, as well, the Cypher, right? Uh, they're just waiting for them to get aggressive, waiting for them to push. Asuna has done well to get onto site, but Mitch is there to defend. Gets one through the wall, and here comes oh, Tenzin no. buys. The spike goes down, and it's all going Pete Tong. 13-9 to C9. And I tell you what, a very impressive performance, especially when we consider how much they struggled against Sentinels on this map, GB. Uh, I love what they were able to offer offensively, but defensively, with the Ops, they look too strong. Yeah, and Tens was a difference maker again, but not so much in, in one direction, right? Like typically Tens is like the, the guy who just completely pops off for this team. And and, and yes, he got 21 frags that game. Uh, even then, everyone contributed and played their role to a T. Really com a combination for Mitch to the aggressive Sage. No fear. I love that play. You don't necessarily expect it all that often because of how vital a Sage is. But Mitch is trying to just change the conversation on how you play that particular agent on Ascent. Uh, but the day for right now belongs to Cloud9. Great.